<clears throat> Hi, class. This is 16.2, and it's all about the multiplication rule. And we also will see permutations and combinations. First of all, the multiplication rule gives us an easy way to calculate um, <clears throat> the number in our sample space, really, for <clears throat> multiple um, multiple events that happen. So we saw earlier there was like a chairman and, and 6.1. There was a chairman and there was also, we had to choose a chairman and we also had to choose a treasurer. So one quick way to like find out how many different ways there are to do that is by using this multiplication rule. <clears throat> so it says, when something The multiplication rule, when something takes place in several stages, like you pick first a treasure, a chairman, and then you pick a, a um, treasure, you can find the total number of ways it can occur by multiplying. the number of ways that you can get each individual stage. So let's just look back at that problem really quick about the, um, <clears throat> we were asked <clears throat> how many, there were two directors, let's just look at number three, part B. Two directors are selected from to form a committee and there was four people originally to choose from and um, two people need to be um, <clears throat> selected. Oh, let's let's do the chairman. I'm sorry. I'm mean, let's do part A. The chairman and treasurer. Okay. So we can think about how many different ways can I choose a chairman? There are one, two, three, four different people that I can choose as a chairman. So I would say there's four different ways that I can choose a chairman. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by the number of ways that I can choose a, do the second thing, choose a treasure. Now, the thing is, once I choose a chairman, now let's say I cho choose Ali. Now there's three other people left to choose as a chairman. So that means no matter who I choose, if I choose Brad, then there's Ali, Kara, and Dan left to choose for treasure. If I choose Kara, then there would be Ali, Brad, and Dan left to choose for um, my treasure. So there's three different ways. There's four different ways for me to originally choose a chairman. And there's only three different ways that I can choose a treasure from once I make that first decision. So the total, what we do is you just multiply those together four times three. And that means there's 12 different ways that I can choose a treasurer and, tr um, and, and chairman. So that's why when we multi when we we um we listed out all the different ways in it for part A, we found that there was actually 12. So a fast way to figure that out would just be by recognizing by using this multiplication rule. Okay. So that's what the multiplication rule is. So you have to first figure out how many different decisions you need to make. In the example that I just went over, we had to decide a treasure, or sorry, a, I keep getting mixed up, a chairman first. And then the second decision we had to make was who is going to be the treasurer. So there was two decisions. So that, that tells you the number of times where you're going to be multiplying. And then um, how many um, choices do you have with each decision you need to make? So that's the second question that we need to ask. Because that re that determines how, what numbers we will be multiplying together. So let's see an example. Suppose you have packed 10, two pants, three skirts, six shirts, and two pairs of shoes for a trip. How many different outfits can be created? So you really have to think about you know, we have to choose, well, I guess they're not, they're not worrying. Oh, they do worry about shoes. I'm sorry. So when we get dressed, we have to make sure our top is covered. So that means a shirt. And that in, in this situation, they're only giving us the shirt, right? So 
we we have to make a decision on our shirt. Or how to cover our top, right? Hope we're not going around shirtless. No, that's not an option. <laughs> okay, how to cover our top of our body, right? When we get dressed. And then now we need to figure out how to cover the body. The second decision is how to cover our our bottom, the bottom of our body, okay? Right? And then the third decision that we need to make here is we need to make the num um, the shoe decision, right? About what shoes are putting on. And I guess if we had necklaces, or then we'd have more decisions to make. But it sounds like they're they're not putting on a necklace today, so we don't have to make a decision about that. So. So I guess if I wanted to better write this, um, I would say we have make a we make a choice on a top which we only can choose from shirts. So choose your shirt. And then we, from the, when we cover about, think about how to cover the bottom half, we have to choose, there's two ways to cover your bottom half, either the pants or the skirt. Now, some people do wear skirts with pants with skirts and my daughters do this sometimes, but we're not gonna count that right now. We're going to say you're either putting on a skirt or you're putting on pants. That's another, it's a whole other question, like a, a different answer if we included pant and skirt combinations. But we're just going to say that they're going to choose either um, a skirt um, oh, and this is shirt. It sure looks like skirt to me. They're just about similar. Or pants. I had to think about this problem. I had to think about what I do when I get dressed in the morning myself. I was like, what do we need to put on, right? I did to figure out that. So how many different ways can I make that first choice? So I noticed I'm going to be multiplying three numbers together because, oh, wait, I'm going to multiply, wait, Three times. Well, I guess we're multiplying three numbers because there's three choices to make, three decisions that we need to make. Okay. <clears throat> so, my submiss, I may have made misspoke earlier when I say how many decisions do you have to be made? That's the number of numbers we're multiplying together, right? <clears throat> and then how many choices? That determines the numbers they themselves that we are multiplying together. So like for number one, it says you choose your shirt. Well, how many different shirts do we have to choose from? Six. So uh, that first number is six. I'm gonna multiply six times. Now I have a choice of either a skirt or pants, but that I can just add that together. That's two pants plus three skirts. So that's a total of five different bottoms that I can choose from. So five bottoms. And then the number of shoes, there's two pairs, right? Oh yeah, two pairs of shoes. So there's two of those. So are how many different outfits can we choose? Um, we can choose six times five times two. So six times five, we multiply together first is 30 times two. And then I draw a line and make sure we get the two, that's 60. There we go. So that's 60 different outfits that we can choose. One way to kind of like um, visualize it would be drawing kind of like a a, a, um, a tree table, but I, I won't worry about that right now. Anyways, <clears throat> and we could draw out each of the different options. I could imagine if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna, I won't worry about that right now. I will do, I will say that, that just make sure when you're multiplying several numbers together, that you don't accidentally multiply the you know, the next one, the same one twice, if you will. 
Like, so, um, <clears throat> Sometimes people get a little bit mis like when we're doing six times five times two, it's not like multi um <clears throat> we just multiply the first two numbers together, six times five, we get an answer, and then that's 30. And then we just write down the next, we find that product and multiply it by whatever numbers are left. You know, so if we have a two left, then we would multiply it by two. And if there was another number here, let's just write like times seven. So then we would take the answer after multiplying by two and then multiply that times seven. If that original problem said times seven, you know, like six times five times two times seven. Okay. So, um, don't get confused on, um, accidentally multiplying another number in there a second time. <clears throat> All right. Next they say, if two sweaters are added to the above situation, so that a shirt and or sweater or both shirt and sweater can be worn, how many different outfits could be made? So now we're adding a third choice, right? We're adding if two sweaters are added to the above situation. So now we have a not choice, but I mean it's decision. We're having another decision <clears throat> to make. So we choose our shirt. That's going to be the same. Well, hold on a second. It says if two, well, I'm just going to write down all our choices. You're going to choose a shirt. You're going to choose a, um, a bottom. Well, I should just write, we're going to choose a top. And we'll figure out what that entails later. Okay. We're going to choose the top. We're going to choose the bottom. We're going to choose shoes. Okay. Now, I guess like if they were just adding a sweater, like now you can, <clears throat> now you can, now we have the choice of, we could do this in a few different ways of attacking it. We could think of sweater is like the fourth choice. Like now that we're all dressed, you know, we have our shirt, we have our pant, pant or skirt, and we have our shoes. Then we could think about this as now we have a sweater to choose from. And that was that that's fine. And then there's two different sweaters that we could choose from. <clears throat> but let's see if that if that's okay and that works out. Okay. If two sweaters are added to the above situation, so that a shirt or sweater or both and both a shirt and sweater can be worn. How many different outfits can can be made? Okay. <clears throat> so it's looking like not only are we adding a sweater as like a choice, like we have a choice to wear a sweater or not with any of the different shirts, but now we could replace the shirt with a sweater. So that gives us different options um, as to, um, <clears throat> and there's another problem too, that if I choose a sweater instead of a shirt, then I wouldn't need to put a sweater on if I already am wearing a sweater. So I don't think that we should like think of this as like the fourth decision because if we think about it, okay, we get all dressed. Now I put a sweater on wait a second, we could have already had a sweater on because we could have chosen it as one of our tops. So instead of thinking about this as a fourth decision, let's think about it as just um, having more choices for a top. And let's try to count the number of different ways that we could possibly have a top, including sweater, not sweater, and whatnot. So... <clears throat> Oh, 
when I choose my top, I can choose all of the original shirts only. I could still do that. So I could choose, there's six different shirts that I could wear. Now I also have the two sweaters that I could put in place of the shirt. So that makes eight different just if, if and this is just if I put a single shirt or sweater on. And maybe what's best here is I'm gonna list out for our tops. We could have the, the, the situation where we just put one single top, either shirt or sweater. And that would mean that that would be eight different choices that we have, okay? So that's a, a single top. We have the choice of putting a single top on and there's eight different ways to do that, okay? Or we, we have the choice of putting a shirt and sweater combination on because, right, it says if two sweaters are added to the above situation so that a shirt or sweater, shirt or sweater or both could be worn. So here's the, the situation. We, and I guess a one way of thinking about this is I could add, what we need to do is we need to add up the number of shirts because that's a situation that we could just wear a shirt. Or then we need to add the number of sweaters and we need to add the, the different ways that we could have both a sweater and shirt. What are all the different possible ways that we could have a sweater and shirt? And the answer is that we could think of that as two choice, two um, decisions in themselves. Like I have a decision of what sh shirt I want to put on. There's six of them. And then after that, I choose what sweater I could put on after it. And there's times two. So that would be a total of 12 different shirt sweater combinations. So like if I chose a red sweater, then I could choose the purple. No, I'm sorry. If I chose a red shirt, I could choose the purple sweater, you know, or if I chose a green shirt, I could choose the purple sweater if I choose. So, and we could quickly kind of do like a little, a little, um, tree diagram to help you kind of understand that. <laughs> and understand that there's 12 different sweater shirt combinations. So let me just, well, I guess you can email me and I can do more on that. But let me, I do feel like I do want to quickly do that. You can, you can always fast forward the video if you're not interested in, in that. But let me just quickly draw that out for you just because I feel like this would be good. Okay. If I have, if I'm, how many ways or how many different combinations of shirts and sweaters could I wear? How many? So what we could do is we could say there's six different shirts. So maybe it, um, I have I have six different shirts. So maybe I have a green shirt. I have a red shirt. I have a blue shirt. I have a yellow shirt. I have a purple shirt. I have a white shirt. Okay. And then for each one of those, I have two sweaters. So I have, let's say I have a, a black and white sweater, okay? I have a white sweater and I have a black sweater. So with my green shirt, I could wear my white sweater or I could wear my black sweater. With my red shirt, I could wear my white sweater or black sweater. With my, I think it was blue, or maybe it was black. I can't remember what the B here was standing for, but I think I, think I meant blue, I put BL. I could wear a white or B, and the B is black. If I have a yellow shirt on, I could wear a white sweater or a black sweater with it. Purple shirt on, I had to wear a white or a black sweater. And if I had a white shirt on, I'd have a white sweater or a black sweater on. Okay, so you could see that every little um, every little 
branch here, like green, white represents a different combination. Like I have a green shirt and a white sweater, a green shirt and a black sweater, a green, a red shirt and a white sweater, a red shirt and a black sweater and so on. So you can count them more easily. You could just count um, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And we see that there's 12 different ways that we can, combinations of different tops and sweaters that we can choose from, okay? So that's why I'm gonna say that there was the, if it, I have a choice of just wearing a single top and there was eight different ways to do that, or I could have choose from one of the 12 ways to wear the sweater top the sweater and shirt combination. And <clears throat> so there's to a total of 12 plus eight, which is 20 different ways that I could choose a top. Okay. Then with the bottom, I could say, um, <clears throat> oh, there's still only, right? Oh, there's two plus three because there's two pairs of pants and three different skirts. So there's two plus three, and there's five different choices for the bottom. Okay, then for the shoes, there's still two different pairs of shoes. So this one would be, I have 20 different tops to, 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 to choose from, times by the five different bottoms, times by the two different shoes. So it's 20 times five, which is 100, times two, which is... 200. So we have 200. Oh, wow. That's a whole lot of different choices. So you can imagine like, I have a lot of clothes. I have more, way more than what they're saying right here, three skirts, or whatever. And, and, and well, I might have three skirts, but I have a lot of different pants and shirts, shorts. I must have a ton of different possible outfits to wear. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. They say, how many different, okay, now this goes on, to, this is, we're moving away from the skirts and shirts, shirt, shirts and whatnot. Now they're saying how many different license plates can be made with one number followed by three letters, followed by three numbers. Okay, so now we have to think about how many different, okay, wait, there is how many different decisions need to be made. We need to decide on the first because there's how many, there's one number followed by three letters. So it's one, two, three. And then there's followed by three numbers. So one, two, three. So there are, looks like there's seven different choices we need to make or decisions that we need to make for each of these letters or numbers. And we need to put the number of different choices we have for each different spot. So for the first spot, there is, it has to be a number and it has to be one number. So it has to be a number between zero and nine, which there's 10 of those. So we could say there's 10 numbers that could be for that, that, that first between zero and nine. <clears throat> and because between one and nine, there's nine. And if you add zero in, then there's 10 digits. So there's 10 different choices for the first um, thing in this license plate, first number in the license plate. And then next followed by a letter. Well, there's 26 letters. So that's times times by 26. And then this, there's another letter. So 26. And I'll note here, they're not saying that, that it, that, um, <clears throat> that it has to be a different letter than the first letter. Now, if they said, okay, you chose a D for the first letter, you can't have D be the second letter. That would be, that's what's called without repetition. And if you do without repetition, I would have to write, oh, well, since I chose the first letter, now I had, there's 25, you know, choices for the second letter. I would have to do that if they said no repetition of letters or numbers. But in this situation, they're not they're not saying anything about it. It sounds like repetition is fine. It sounds like if there's if it's followed by the same letter, that's fine. So there's all 26 letters that we get to choose from for all three of those. Then followed by three numbers. 
So then they're if, assuming I could use the same number that I already used in the front, then, um, and that, that is called repetition. Repetition is okay. Then this is, if we multiply all those numbers together, 10 times 20 times 20 times 20, or 10 times 26 times 26, 26 times 10 times 10, that would be the, that would be um, our answer. So I will warn you that your calculator might come up with something that looks like 26 E, it has an E to the 10th power. And what that means is it means 26 times 10 to the 10th power. It's not that scary though, because the, when you times by 10, by um, a power of 10 like this, it just means move the decimal this many places. So whatever the exponent is on that 10 or whatever comes after the number E, that's the number of times we need to move the decimal to the right. If it's a positive 10, you move it to the right. If it was a negative, if, it was, if, if there's a negative number after the E, then you'd be moving the decimal that many places to the left. So um, you would have to move go the decimal. There's always a decimal at the end of any whole number um, after the ones place. And then you just move it one, two, three, four. You make the troughs. And for every trough, you put a zero in there. Right. And so we would do that 10 times to make that this number, this answer, because these answers in here in this section are going to be pretty large because we're doing 10 times 26 to 26. Let me just calculate and what that is really quick. You can use your calculator on um, <clears throat> on our class website. Just go to the first module, start here, click on cl cl class calculator. And it will handle larger numbers better than like other calculators will. Okay, so yeah, so I got, and my calculator just gave it to me, but I got 176, I don't even, it's probably, well, that's a million, 175 million, 760,000. Okay, that's the answer that I got when I multiplied 10 times 26, times 26, times 26, times 10 times 10, 10. But let me just double check, I'll just, um, I did, 26 times 26 times 26. Got an answer. Then times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's the answer I get. Okay. So these are, can be big numbers. So watch for that carefully on your calculator for that E notation, because once they, you start getting so big, they just start using the E. Anyways, the next problem they say have here for us is a computer password consists of four letters, A through Z, followed by two digits, one, zero through nine. Assume the passwords are not case sensitive. An uppercase letter is the same as a lowercase letter. Thank God, because then if it was if it if they were case sensitive, then we would have had to count, they would have to do 26 plus 26, which I think is 52. We would have to say there's 52 different options for a letter or a number, because if you count the, the uppercase and lowercase as different letters, if you will. So um, <clears throat> first they ask us how many different passwords are possible. So there's four letters. So there's four different choices that we need to make or four decisions for the letters, followed by two, di two digits, numbers. So that means it's going to be 26 times 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10. Then they ask how many different passwords end in six. So it's going to be very similar as above to above. So I get to choose any of the three numbers I want, so 26 times 26 times 26, and then times 10 times 10, and these numbers are, are can be whatever they want. But then the last one, ha we have no choice. It has to end in a six, so it's just times one. We have one choice of all the digits there's to choose from. So 
it's going to be equal to 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 1. Okay, how many different passwords do not start with B, C, or P? So let me just write this one um, a little further down, and you'll know that this is the answer to C. So I'll just write, this is C down here. I'll just write the answer down here. But okay, how many different passwords do not start with B, C, or P? So that means my starting letter has three less options. So, and I do, this used to have 26 options. It could be, it used to be any letter it wanted, but now B, C, or P, that's three. So I take away three and that leaves me with 23 options because it could be anything but B, C, or P. So <clears throat> my first letter has to be one of the 23 letters that are not B, C, or P. And then now the second letter can be whatever it wants. The third letter can be whatever it wants. Oh, oh, four letters. Okay, I, I needed another letter. I needed another letter. A computer password because it's a four letters. Okay, so I, I, I'm sorry, I, did, I missed another letter in here. So I'll just put times 26 for the second answer there. Yeah, because four letters and then three followed by two digits. Oops. So I accidentally, this one I kind of messed up. It should be times 10 times one. Sorry about that. That's just because I was thinking it was three letters and three numbers, whatever. Okay, so it's four letters. So this um, <clears throat> this this is the, this is the the first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter. Well, let me get my pointer. First letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter. It says the first letter. Okay, the how many passwords do not start with? So the first letter only can't be P, P, C, or P. That's why I add to 23 and not a 26. Okay, so the first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter, and then the last two are numbers, and they don't have any restrictions in this part of it, in part C for the numbers. So we just do 10 times 10, and we multiply all those numbers together, and that is our answer. Okay, then for part D, how many passwords have, have repeat, have no repeats? No repeated symbols. So let me, I'm gonna erase my part for answer for part C. I hope you got that down, down in your notes. And then part D, how many computer passwords have no repeated symbols? So the first four are letters and the last two are numbers. Okay, well, the first one can be any letter it wants. So all 26 letters. Then times the next letter. Now, if I chose like an A for the first letter, now the next letter can't be an A. So it has to be 26 minus one because now it, it can choose for between B and Z, but it can't be A. So now it has 25 different choices for your second letter. But now because now let's say I chose A and B, doesn't really matter because, because whatever I choose, I, it's still gonna, have, we're still gonna have, it's gonna be minus one, you're gonna have 24 choices left for that third letter. And then again, now if I chose A, B and C, I have to take away three from 26. So, or just take away another one from 24. So that leaves you with 23 different letters to choose from for that fourth um, letter. So, okay. The first letter could be what it wants, but once you choose a letter for that, like A, you can't choose that same letter for the second one. So that's why we they, we say you only have 25 choices for your second letter, then 24 choices for your third, 23 choices for your fourth letter. Okay, now we get to the digits. So now you have 10 choices for the first digit, but now you can't repeat the digit. So if you choose like a one for your first digit, you, know, you, you have to choose zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine for the second digit. So that leaves you with nine choices for your second digit. So this is what it would look like if there, this is the number of passwords that do not have any repeated symbols. And there you go.
So, I mean, you'd have to multiply together 26 times 25, 27, 3, 24, times 23, times 10, times 9 in your calculator. But that would be your answer. All right. Um, now it asks, determine the number of, of possible outcomes in for each sample space. A coin is tossed seven times in a row. The result of each toss, heads or tails, is observed. <clears throat> so we can think about the 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 coin tossing as a different decision. <clears throat> right? So with the first coin toss, there's we it, we're gonna have a, a decision of with what how what what it lands in, either a heels or heads or tails. The second and all the way to the, to the seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what are the choices? What could it land on? Um, it could land on a heads or a tails for the first, the first toss. And that's true for the second toss. And that's true for the third toss. That's true for the fourth toss and all the way down. Every single time, it's always the same that you have either at, for the first toss all the way to the last toss, you're either going to land on the heads or tails. So if we multiply that all out together, two times two times two times two times two times two, times two <clears throat> we'll get the total number of different combinations like heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, what, whatever, um, of, of combinations of heads, heads, tails that you could possibly roll when you roll that could possibly happen if you tossed a coin seven times. And you see that earlier when we did this in 6.1, they ask us, well, how many, you know, if we observe whether it's heads or tails, well, what we could have thought of as there is two choices when there's two coins or two, it would cost toss a, toss a coin two times. The first time it could be heads or tails. So there's two choices for the first time. And there's two choices for the second time that it could be. So that, that gives us a total of four different ways. Like it could be like heads, heads, it could be heads, tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And so I um, <clears throat> this is a, a shortcut to doing the 16.1 homework. Or, or this is not maybe not a shortcut because you they want you to actually list it out like I've listed it here. But... If they ask you how many different outcomes are there from from um, costing, tossing two coins, if we're recording the heads and tails, then you'd say there's four. And we have them listed all out here. And we could do the same thing with seven coin tosses. We could list out one possible um, outcome of listing, set, of, of tossing at seven coins. I mean, one possible way would be I could get Heads, 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 tails, heads, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's one possible result when I um, <clears throat> toss a coin seven times. That's just one possible result. But we're saying if I were to list them all out, like all the possible results, like and then another one is heads, tails, heads, tails, heads tails, heads, right? If I listed all the different ways that it could, we could toss a coin and reserve the outcome, we would find that there are two times, two times, two times, two times, two different ways that we could, that we could um, land on heads and tails. And so <clears throat> let me just calculate what that is really quick. Seven, and that that's actually two to the seventh power. That would be the faster way to calculate this, right? So you could you have x to the y in your calculator. There's a little button that says x to the y. So you could just put in, and I get 128. So that's 2 to the 7th is 128. Or you could just do 2 times 2 times 2 times in your calculator, right? Okay, 7 times. Anyways, okay, that, that's this one. Next, they say a, a die is rolled 5 times in a row. So it's like five decisions being made. 
because the first die has a choice about how it wants to land. The second die does, the third die, fourth die. Oh, wait, a die is rolled five times. So five times. I mean, the time, the first time it's rolled, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. And there's just a decision that's going to be, or there, these are five decisions. And now we have to think about how many choices um, each roll had. So there are six. I could like roll, it had six choices of what it wanted to land on when I rolled that die the first time, right? And then uh, times six times six, and that is the answer. So we can do in our calculator. And like I said, it looks like X to the Y. And usually you would put a six in, you would press this button on your calculator and then you would press, cause we're doing it one, two, three, four, five times. So it's six to the fifth power. So I would, I do this button, this button, and then that button, right? And then press enter. Usually that's the way you enter it in most calculators. Anyways, um, let me do it on mine. I get 7,000. 776. So that's a lot of different combinations like of, you know, like you could have rolled a one, then a, then you six, then a three, then a four, you know, or you could have rolled a a three, then a one, then a, a two, you know, like there's a lot of different possible outcomes when you, when you roll a die six, five times. Anyways. All right, so that is, um, that's 6.2. Now moving on, <clears throat> a permutation is the number of possible outcomes when choosing our items out of in given items without replacement when order matters. And when they say without replacement, it also means like without repetition. So some of these problems that we did over here, um, like like number three problems one through C, we didn't matter. We could have the same number or letter come up several times. But when they're talking about permutations and combinations, um, there's if we're picking out a password or something like that, the, there's no repeats. So that's also what's meant by without replacement. <clears throat> <clears throat> Once you choose any number or letter that's taken out of the numbers and letters that could possibly be, you know, in um, chosen next. Okay, so um, <clears throat> they ask. Okay, so the but the biggest thing that I want you to recognize about these permutations and combinations, it is is first of all, it's a shortcut to helping us find the total possible outcomes in the probability experiment because it can be get pretty complicated as you can. See from the, the previous problems, our numbers get really big, really fast, and and it's a lot of counting that, and this this simplifies our counting. The one multiplication rule was one way of simplifying our counting process. Instead of listing out, right, like we were able to just multiply, which is nice. And this is the second way that we can simplify in some in some problems, right? Um, if, in the problems where order when when we're given a type of problem where it says. The number of possible outcomes when choosing our items out of in items without replacement, when order does matter, we use this NPR notation, which is permutation, mutation. Or if there's a number of possible outcomes, okay, this is this will give you, if you use this in choose R notation, that, that notation, um, there's a formula that um, when you put it into the calculator in CR, you have to use the, the special button for it or whatever. But if you put that into the calculator, it'll it'll do a formula for you. And, and <clears throat> it'll come out with the number of possible outcomes when choosing our items out of a total of in items without replacement when, when order doesn't matter. So <clears throat> that's like I was thinking about earlier. Um, so I'll show you some examples. And we talked we talked about that a little bit. Order matters and doesn't order doesn't matter in 6.1, but we'll see some more examples here, right here. Should permutations or combinations be used to solve each problem? 
In how many ways can five oranges be chosen from a bin containing 20 oranges? So, <clears throat> If I have a, a jar of 20 oranges, and let's just say they are going to be different, right? Some are going to be bruised. Some are not going to taste good. Some are going to be have a worm in them or whatever. So each one is different individual orange. So maybe if you thought of these oranges as either having, do you want to name them? To, just to make sure that you're thinking about these oranges as different oranges, right? Because <clears throat> they're not... Fruit is not all identical, but anyways, um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so we can think about them as being like the same, this is as the same problem as having 20 people. And then we're picking groups of five of those people. So how many ways can five oranges be chosen from 20 oranges? Or how many ways can five people be chosen from a group of 20 people? Now, does it matter who I choose out first? Like if I choose Jamie is the first one to be chosen, does it matter? Like, or if she's chosen fourth here, I don't see that it matters. They're just asking for how many ways can a group of five oranges be chosen? And how many ways can five oranges be chosen? So to me, order does not matter. So I would say, and and and, and in this situation, order would not matter. <clears throat> and you'll see in, in, in the next examples how where order does matter and you'll see a difference. But right now, order doesn't matter. So we would use um, combinations. So I would use the NCR type of prop, um, formula to find the answer in this type of problem. A website require, requires each user to select a five-letter password in which no letter may be, re be repeated, which is important because it, this is with all without replacement. How many such passwords are available? So a website requires each user to select a five-letter password in which no letters are repeated. So here, the first number that I choose through my password that's going to be the first number I enter in my computer when I do password. So like, in other words, if I, in, if I choose um, in my password, is it five letter? If I choose an um, candy, C-A-N-D-Y, right? I chose the, fir to the first letter in my password to be a C, the second letter to be an A, the third letter to be an, an N, and a D, fourth letter D, and last letter Y. Well, that's different. That's a different password than, than if I did it backwards, Y, D, N, A, C, right? That's different. So the order here does matter because it, it makes a different password. So I'm going to say this is permutation. So N, NPR, <clears throat> in how many ways can 15 employees be assigned to work in 15 cubicles, cubicles? In how many ways can 15 people be assigned to work in 15 cubicles? Now, I'm assuming these cubicles are located in different areas around the the um, the office. So I'm thinking when you pick the first person, if you assign them to the first cubicle, and you pick that when you pick the second person and they're assigned to the second cubicle, or if you assign or or even if you just like pick somebody and be like, okay, the first person gets to choose wherever they want the cube. The, the, the cubicle they want to sit at and the second person has to choose whatever's left and third person that that's that's a difference that is that there's a difference between these cubicles such that I would you know it's a <clears throat> you can think about it in either way but 
assigning when when you pick you know Janie first to be in that first cubicle that's different than picking Janie to be in the fourth cubicle so and you know some of them might have pretty view windows that I did pretty views out the windows some of them they may not some of them may be next to the air conditioner some of them may not you know so I'm thinking that the order here is important because it determines which person is going to be in which cubicle, and um, that's important. Okay, and just <clears throat> in a contest, three winners are to be selected at random from 100 entries. In how many ways can, can this be done? So this one sounds like order doesn't matter because they're just picking three people. If they call your name first and they call your friend's name second and somebody else's name last, does that matter? Like, like does that um, make it? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter who was called. They're all, everybody is going to be Every, all, the three people are going to be winners. And it's not like the first person called is winning like an iPad and the second person is winning a $5 gift card. You know, like it, it's, there's no difference. They're just all three winning the same thing. So I would say here, the order doesn't matter. And... <clears throat> How many ways can you arrange five books on a bookshelf? So of course, I feel like these books are different. And these books, you know, obviously the, the red book could be first, the yellow book could be second, the blue book third, green fifth, fourth, and then brown fifth. And that's different than, you know, like um, the brown being first, the blue being second and whatnot. And they want to know exactly how many arrangements of these books can be. So this is definitely the order matters here. Okay, so that that hopefully seeing these examples will help, help you. Now they go ahead and ask us, how many possible outcomes are there if seven if seven candidates are running for three positions? And they're they're adding this into the fact that the first person chosen is going to be president, the second person vice president, and third person treasurer. So the, I'm not just picking groups of three. I the the um order matters because the first person's president, the second person's vice president, and the third person's treasurer, and that's a different situation than you know, um if <clears throat> than the first person being like treasurer or whatnot, you know, right? Like they're, they're each being assigned to specific roles depending on when their name was called out. So the order here does matter. So we're gonna do um, 7P3. Now, <clears throat> at the end, I'm gonna show you how to actually do that calculation in the calculator that I have in the classroom. But I think for most of the homework, I believe for the homework, you don't have to. You just have to put this. That's what you have to put. Because it's just a matter of putting it into the calculator and getting the answer. And it's not that hard. But I'll show you at the end how to do it just so that you know for your own knowledge. And just in case um, I have left out any problems in the homework that that um, still want you to put it in the calculator. Okay. How many p possible outcomes are there if seven candidates are running for three equal positions? So notice now, like if I imagine I'm pulling people's names out of a hat from these seven and the first person and the second person and third person, they all equally get the same position. So it doesn't matter the order that I pull their names out. Like, so here I'm just looking for combinations, seven, choose three. All right. And then here's the last one. A college club with 22 members needs to choose four members to attend a regional conference. And how many ways can this be done? So like I'm saying, there's no, I pick four numbers. It doesn't matter who I pick first. 
or who I pick second, they're just going to this regional conference. They're not like receiving different awards or something. So it's um, combinations. It's 22 people are being chosen from four people. It's always the larger number first and then the on the left, I'm sorry, the larger number on the left. And as we move to the right, the, the smaller number. And you, you notice that that's how we use that notation. All right. So it's always we, this is the number we um, choose, the number we have to choose from, and this is the number that we have to choose. So anyways. All right, let me show you how to do this on the calculator, just in case you have to do it. <clears throat> Okay, so here is, okay, I just wanna go back when we are in our classroom, right? So here's our home. And then here is the, here's our home. Here is the modules page. And then when you go to modules, then you click start here. The top module is start here. You click on the arrow to open it. And then you can go down to the calculator. And then you can click on the link to follow the calculator. Open it up a second time. Okay. Now from this screen, you can um, click on stat and then click on, see the NCR notation here or the NPR notation. So like the previous number seven, they said, um, how many possible outcomes are there if seven candidates are running for three positions? So I can choose this, and we said that was permutation. So I can choose the NPR notation, and then the first number was seven, I'm, and then the second one was three, and then I just press enter, and then and then um, <clears throat> my answer is two hundred and ten. So there are two hundred and ten different ways to choose three um, officers from seven people. Okay. And then, and the next one they wanted us to do, we just clear, clear out of that and then just hit stat again. And now they want me to do the combination. So, so it's in the CR. So now I'm going to put seven and three. This was and I press enter and then that's 35. So there's 35 different ways that I can choose three members from seven. And then the last problem that we had to do, just do it again, I press stat and then I press um, combinations because this is a combinations problem. And then it's 22 and I, I use my I arrow over to get into that little box. See how the, I use the left, the right, the right arrow to go over there and then I get or, and then I just press enter and it's 7,315. So that is how you would do it on the calculator if you need to do it. So <clears throat> we just stop there for a minute and then I wrote the answers on the actual page for you if you wanted to write them down. And I think it'll just take a minute to. So there we go there. I just, I kept found those answers on the calculator and I put them here on the page for you. All right. Have a good day. Bye.